What I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, to make um, the biscuits with the Catherine's biscuit. Um, I'm going to use the biscuit like it's shown here, but I'm going to reduce it so it's just like one batch. So you can see what, how to make the one batch, how to cut in the butter. Um, and that's where we are. Now, the thing about, and I've written this down into the, um, into the instructions some, um, is about flour. And if you guys, if you guys have had issues with flour, or if you guys have had issues with your biscuits being tough, um, or not rising, um, those are the two biggest issues that people have with biscuits. Has anyone had issues with biscuits when they make them, if they don't make them out of a can, uh, if they actually make the biscuits? Uh, has anyone had any problems with them being, okay. So if you read down further in, into the pack here, you'll see that um, there's lots of places where you can go on the internet and find this stuff. But I lived in Minnesota for 21 winters. And I think I told Sandra this earlier today, is that I imported, hey, I imported, um, I used to import White Lily to my place up in Minnesota. Um, and I'm gonna get you, have to get you another recipe pack because I've we've run out. Okay. Um, because in Minnesota, we, I couldn't get White Lily. Um, and this is a 100% southern hard winter wheat. That means that the protein in this wheat is two grams of protein, um, if, which is really low. And that causes, um, that makes the gluten very uh, light, light gluten. If you're doing, um, if you're doing a Yankee bread, if you're doing a pizza, you know, where you're using yeast, that yeast is a lot stronger than the chemical leavening of baking soda and baking powder. So the, uh, you can use more gluten. You have to knead it. You beat it. You knead it. You knead it. You knead it. You knead it until it gets really soft. But with biscuits, as everybody knows, pretty much, you barely touch them. You keep your hands off of them. Um, and the most manhandling you do is when you're cutting in, uh, cutting in the, the butter. I use butter um, because I like how it tastes. Um, and I like the fluffiness. If you look at this recipe after you've edited it, um, you'll see that not only is there self-rising flour being used, but there's also uh, baking powder. Okay, so it's self-rising flour, which already has baking powder in it and salt. Um, and I'm using additional baking powder. Um, also, um, you'll see that I've used water in this, okay, because uh, it actually provides ac steam to lift those biscuits. Not only that, this particular recipe that I'm showing you today, um, we've made them tons and tons of times. You can just keep working them. They, ne they, they never get tough. The very first biscuit that you roll out is going to be the last biscuit you roll out is going to be just as good as the first biscuit, which is amazing for me. I mean, they're, boof, they're really, really big. So try this recipe out. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, it's pretty simple. Again, we use it all the time. So when you come up here this evening before we leave, I want you to look at the, I want you to look at the proteins on the flowers. This is a self-rising southern biscuit, which is what I use a bunch of. It's less expensive, really, really good flour, and it's local. It's North Carolina flour. White Lily um, used to uh, be local, but it's not much anymore. Gold Medal is out of Minnesota, and you'll see this has got four grams of, of protein in it. So this is a little, this is too stiff. This, this is too tough for the baking powder to get the rise on. Um, so you don't want to go there. This is great for bread or whatever. But you just, this is a good all-purpose flour, but you just don't want to do a southern cook with it. That's why southern biscuits are so giant. That's why southern cakes are so light and fluffy. It's because we use this very low protein, low gluten flour. Okay. There's that. Now, 
What I'm going to show you is how to measure flour for biscuits. Now, a lot of times people will scoop <laughs> and, and then throw it in. But you don't want to do that with flour. And really, um, most, most bakers use um, weights and not cups because um, it's a little more accurate. We don't have to do that because we're just home cooks. So what you want to do is you want to get into the bag of the flour with a giant spoon and you just want to dish out the flour so it's nice and fluffy. Okay. And I'm actually just, okay, so I'm going to use two cups. This is for one small batch of these biscuits. So, what? Uh, I don't until after I add the dry ingredients. Okay? So after I add the dry ingredients, then I'll sift. Um, and I do that if I feel like it needs to be. Uh, baking powder. Very important that you test the baking powder to make sure that it's fresh enough to get the rise in your biscuits. So what you do is you get a teaspoon of the baking powder that you've had hiding behind the jam jars for 12 years. <laughs> and you put, that, you put that in a cup, in a measuring cup, and then you, um, you come over and you get some hot water. This will make a lot of sense to you because um, you just want to make sure that it's got, a, it's got, any, it's got bubbles. And that's how you can tell if it's, if it's, and see there's, so it's, it's, it's got some bubbles to it, so it's still good. It's got a good rise to it. If, if you don't get bubbles, throw it away, get fresh, or buy biscuit mix, or buy canned biscuits, because you don't want to, <laughs> this is not going to work. Um, all right, so I know about, this is my, this is, I'm just using a teaspoon of baking, powder, using a tablespoon of sugar. Now again, you can, uh, you can sift this if you want. I usually actually do um, because I want to make sure that all the, the baking powder and the sugar, it's just, it's not that big of a deal. If you don't want to, don't. Um, as you see, I don't make a big deal out of it. I don't put it, my mom used to, you know, you can put it out on a piece of wax paper and blah, blah. But you don't really have to do that. But see, you can get all sorts of big goopy things in here. And you can break up the goopy things or you can throw them away. They're not goopy. They're just hard pieces of flour. Okay. So I'm going to give this a stir, too. Okay, so there's my flour. Now. Okay. Now. I'm going to let that sit for just a minute so I can, because I'm going to need my cutting board. Come here, baby. Oh, I could probably use the other one. No, I'll use that one. Okay. Buttermilk. Butter. Keep that. Okay. So this is. Um, this is a stick of butter. I think, yes, it is a stick of butter. Yep. Okay, so it's a quarter cup of butter. It's one stick. And it's cold, and I've chumped it up, you know? So I've, and I'm going to break it up into the bowl. And you basically just want to kind of start the butter. You want to start the cutting in at this phase, at this phase, whenever it's still, when you can see it. This is salted butter. Okay. Now, so I've got all the ingredients in here except for the liquids. 
So now I'm going to be cutting in the butter. Now I, uh, Natalie Dupree taught me how to do this and she's like the queen of southern biscuits. And what you do is you kind of make sort of like snapping motion with your hands. So you're making flakes of butter. Do you understand? So I'm like squeezing the butter. Instead of making pea sizes or using a cutter or whatever, I get in there and I make flat flakes of butter. So it gets in really involved with all that flour. Because the more the more you can get the fat incorporated into the into the into the into the flour, whenever that fat melts, the higher the biscuits go. So this is that's the big trick with the cutting in is that you make like little you make slivers of butter. Anyone else do this? Yeah. Well, it's it, I just I think that again I think that slivers that the that the f is you're actually kind of doing like a croissant type of, of uh, pastry incorporation with the butter and the flour. And it's fun. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Freezer. And you do that because they got the butter. You know, if you keep it in the freezer, you can keep it for a long time. If you keep it in the fridge, you can keep it as long as you keep butter in the fridge. Yes, this is the end of the, ba of the, of the dry process. And you see, okay, so you can't really see too much of the butter anymore, but you can feel, you can feel the flakes. And you, I don't know if you can see it ahead, but there's, there's nice flakes of butter. And I actually, this, between Nellie Dupree and um, these people at Southern Biscuit, um, Southern Biscuit makes this, this wonderful, really icky uh, biscuit mix. It's called Formula L. And, um, and it's got, flakes of yellow butterish stuff in it so and they it makes really beautiful biscuits but I don't know what the formula L stuff is so but I've I noticed that there's these the flakes are in there not not round BBs or anything but flakes so it actually helps helps rise the biscuits okay you don't have any questions everyone gonna everyone knows what they're doing hey, yay okay yeah change gloves Oh, God, no. It's definitely not butter. It's oil and butter and keratin and butter flavor or something or other. Well, it, uh, yeah, and it kind of tastes like butter, but. Okay. Okay, so now, now we get to the wet stuff. Aha, the wet work. And my hands are wet, so it takes me forever to get my gloves on. Okay. Shake your buttermilk. Not too much, though. Now, this is another fun thing because. Um, I went on a mission in Minnesota to find um, cows that I could get real buttermilk from. Because you can't get real buttermilk anymore. Unless you know somebody. Nod, nod, wink, wink. Um, so that they make this stuff up. It's not real buttermilk anymore. Also, if you see on the, in the pack, um, you can make a soured milk. If you don't have buttermilk, you can make a soured milk um, just using lemon juice or, and vinegar, or vinegar. And it curdles the milk and you can use that. Okay. So I'm going to use, 
For this, I'm going to use a third a cup of milk. Um, and then just a little bit of water to make a cup. Okay. And pour that in. And then you just, uh, you do scones the same way, pretty much. Um, you just start incorporating the liquids. Uh, but this is double acting baking powder. Uh, plus you've got the action of the, of the self rising flour as well. So you gotta kinda move kinda fast. But you don't have to kill it. All right. So actually at this point if I wanted to um, you can add anything you want to. I think I'll just leave that alone. Um, now, I've got a pan, 450 degrees. Yes. Okay. Okay, you put up kind of a pretty good bit of flour on your board. This is, this is pretty wet. See that? Um, it's pretty wet, and I'm not, t I'm not touching it. <laughs> I'm barely touching this stuff at all. Because I do not want to develop any gluten. And with regular biscuit biscuits, I usually just pat it out, I, especially a small batch. I don't, uh, I don't do a lot of rolling. Except if I'm doing something like the, the cinnamon rolls. Okay, and I'm a geek, uh, so I um, don't like to punch out. I don't like circles because I waste the stuff in the between. Um, and even though I know that I can keep rolling this out if I want to, I just use a pizza cutter and make square biscuits because that's how I like them. No, you don't touch them. You barely touch them. Just to pat them out. Your hands are hot. It melts the butter. You're so, and plus, the more you mess with them, the more, again, the gluten. You want to keep the gluten down to a minimum. There's two, the, if you need them, you develop gluten. You break up the, you, you break those fibers and they, they start stretching and that's what makes tough biscuits. There you go. It's worth the money, isn't it? Every penny of it. It is again. It's a steaming thing. It helps to steam, and again, it keeps the th it keeps the biscuits malleable, uh, so you can you can keep working them a bit. Okay. Now, um, here's fun thing. So you can uh, with the biscuits, if you like soft sides, then you you push them together. You push the biscuits together. <laughs> If you like crunchy sides, like you're going to split them for something, then you move them apart so you have a crusty edge. See, more new stuff. More new stuff. Amazing. Amazing. Incredible. Now I'm going to do what's called docking. Uh, again, it's just a, this is an old fashioned thing um, that people have always done. See, I, I haven't rolled them out very thin either, so they're gonna, they're gonna, nothing. <laughs> Somewhat, yeah, but. It does do something. 
It helps with the air. Again, it helps with the air movement. I'm just being a wise guy. But serious, y'all, the big deal here is the protein in the flour. Um, they don't tell you this a lot of times because southern cooks just want to keep it to themselves. But it's the protein in the flour that makes it go. I'm sorry? What was the limit to the protein? Uh, four is the limit to the protein. I use two. Two is the limit on the protein. Um, you can use three. Ma'am? Well, thank you, Joanne. All right, I'm just going to smoosh some butter into these things. And, of course, you can, you know, you can make yours a lot prettier. And you can, I actually make these for Christmas presents, and I use a, um, a uh, measuring, I'm, I, <laughs> I use a ruler, so I get two-inch biscuits. But I didn't do that tonight because we're family. These are family biscuits. <laughs>